Oh, we got a good one today. We have the Remarkable 2, considered to be one of the best note-taking devices of all time on their second generation. And we got the Kobo Ellipsa coming from an e-reader company that has a 10-year track record of making e-book readers with their first crack at note-taking. Who is better? Let's check it out. So we're gonna be talking about five things that we're gonna pit these two up against each other. And those are PDF, overall functionality, build quality, stylus support, and other. Because the Remarkable 2 is in no way a multimedia device, we can't really compare Bluetooth, audio, store experience, web browsing, anything like that. I mean, they're not apples and oranges, these two devices, but at the same time, they're like a Granny Smith and maybe like a Macintosh. Without further ado, let's get into it. When it comes to the Remarkable, you have the ability to start scrubbing right away, and the palette on the left is the same as an ebook, as it will be in a PDF, a manga, etc. So that's very good because it's familiar, so you get all the note taking things like layers and whatnot. But when it comes to the PDF settings, precisely relating to PDFs, it's quite lackluster. You actually only get the name and PDF cover, whether you want it the last page visited or the first page when it comes to the thumbnail. That's it. Otherwise, you just change pages and start writing. So it's a toss up. On the Ellipsa, you get a little bit more functionality with PDFs. You can write right away and you can trigger the highlight button as well. This is really cool because without even going to the palette, you can swap between the two. Now tapping the center, you have a lot more options here. If you go to settings, you'll see that reading settings is huge. Orientation, on-screen controls, page refresh, there's a lot here. However, you don't get the same level of functionality as the Remarkable because you don't get layers and the note-taking experience is limited to just the pen. You don't get color choice or pen thicknesses or anything else. But because of this, it does seem that it is balanced between the two and they each get a point. Functionality. <laughs> now we start getting into the uh-oh territory for Remarkable. When you look at the Remarkable, it does a lot of things remarkably, but functionality is not one of them. In fact, this can't do anything. It has layers in the note-taking experience, and it can read some ebooks, but it's too plain. It doesn't have a glow light. It requires a proprietary program to even transfer files, not to mention a one-time passcode, and that you can only have one remarkable device connected to one account at a time. You can't browse the web, there's no audio, there's no store. It's so lacking in overall function that when it gets paired up to anything else, it just drops off the face of the earth. In fact, the Kobo has so much functionality, it's fully loaded. It has its own store, audiobooks, books alike. It has reading stats, pocket integration, overdrive for borrowing books from the library, Dropbox integration, play games. You can pretty much do anything you want on this without taking away from the e-reading or note-taking experience respectively. Pitting the Ellipsa up against something like the Boy or the Onyx, it would fall short, but up against the Remarkable, this thing is a powerhouse. So for the fact that the Ellipsa is more all around, we're going to give the Ellipsa one point. This is where we start to see the scales tip a little bit in the Remarkable's favor. The build quality. It is beautiful. It's sleek. It's built tight. It's glass on aluminum. And the two-tone strip on the side pioneered everyone copying them from Big Me, iReader, Onyx, Smartbook, V5, etc. Both the power button up top and the USB-C port are perfectly up against the side of the ledger on the top and bottom respectively. The back is beautiful and it has four rubber stoppers to prevent it from moving around on a tabletop. This is definitely one of the most beautiful e-ink devices ever made. The Kobo on the other hand is plain. It has a little bit of tapering but there's no standout design elements. It's not cheaply built, it's just nothing impressive. Yes, it has an asymmetrical design with a ledger style thicker bezel on the left and there's two little rubber stoppers on the back. Now the downside is that the rubber stoppers only work in landscape because if it's portrait they're only going to be on one side. 
they didn't really do much to make a very flashy design, and because of these points, we're gonna have to give Remarkable one point for its build quality. Stylus support. The Remarkable we'll start with first. It is running a Wacom screen, meaning that you can use any stylus on the market. We seriously mean it. You can use the Mitsubishi, the Stadler, the Lamy, the Onyx, the Goody Reader, the Boyu, the list goes on. There's no limits. You can use the Remarkable stylus on almost any device. Now, you don't have to charge these pens either because they're running EMR, which we talked about in a couple videos ago. It does have a very good writing feel too, regarded as one of the top three writing experiences out of any e-ink note-taking device. Now, there are some cons. When you buy the Remarkable, the stylus isn't even included. You have to add it in. And there are no buttons on the Remarkable pen. Now they do have one button on the more advanced Marker Plus, but it's $100 more. On the Kobo Ellipsa, the stylus is actually quite nice. It has a two button layout, which means not only you can use lines, you can actually toggle between highlighting any time. And it's scrub highlighting, meaning you don't have to follow text you can highlight anything. This pen also has very good writing feel and you can keep on writing because you just swap out the batteries. Now that moves us on to the cons is that it is running a quadruple A battery, meaning that when you run out of juice, you do have to swap it. Also, because it's not running EMR, it's running an active capacitive layer. That means that no other pen is going to work on the Kobo. However, adding everything up between the two, they each get a point because their stylus support is on the mark. Finally, we reach our last category, and that is Other. The Remarkable can't really keep up with pretty much anything it sticks its head out against. It is a single purpose device. With the Remarkable, you're always going to need something else. You can't read this in the dark, and you can't use Wi Fi comfortably to the point where it does anything other than update. You can't do anything outside of note taking. If you want to read books, it can do it, but you're going to find lack of support, lack of web, lack of dictionary. It's so much of a one trick pony that a lot of people look for more of an all around solution, which the Ellipsa is. It has Bluetooth, it has different wireless connectivities, and it has little bells and whistles like dictionary lookup and Wikipedia and being able to go on the internet whenever you want. Those little things add up to a point where you feel like you don't always have to look for a secondary device and you can just have this all in one package. Because of the complete absence of being able to do anything else on the Remarkable and the fact that the Kobo has everything under one roof, the Kobo is awarded one point. With our testing complete, we have tallied the scores, and when it comes down to it, if you take a step back from the sheer amount of over-advertising and promotion the Remarkable 2 does, the device is just a bit underperforming. Rudimentary and simple things like Bluetooth, web browsing, even a glow light are just so commonplace nowadays, there's very little reason to not have them. Everyone keeps saying it, the Remarkable 2 is distraction free, but as the years go on, you can't keep using that excuse, especially because you're on your second generation. That being said, it is beautiful, it writes great, and it is as advertised. But pound for pound, the Kobo Ellipsa is just better. It's more than all around. You can freely transfer content without using a proprietary computer program and one-time password. You can shop for books, you can even borrow books from the library. The pen is innovative and you pretty much have all the features you need in one note-taking slate without taking away what made Kobo so successful in the first place and that is having an e-reader. Just because this is note-taking capabilities doesn't mean it's any less of an e-book reader. It may have a quadruple A battery reliant pen and is lacking the layers feature but you can just simply do more. If you guys agree with us, if you disagree with us, we want to hear both. We honestly do. Leave a comment down below and keep staying tuned for more amazing comparisons like this one. And if you guys have any other suggestions, we do take suggestions, leave them down below as well. For a comparison against the Remarkable and the Kobo Ellipsus, this is Peter.